How do you go about bridging the gap for him baseball-wise from making the jump from the Japanese league to the major leagues? Um, just, you know, communication, one, I think, is key. And then, um, you know, easing his way in. You know, I've got him. I think he's a top-of-the-lineup type hitter, um, you know, there in the 2-3-4 the area. And, you know, we started him in the six, gave him a little bit of a, a adjustment period. But he's taken off. I mean, it won't be long here, um, maybe today, that he might be uh, up there where I, I envision him on a regular basis. But um, just easing him in and also – getting him the bats uh, that he needs. He had a late start for us and trying to um, get him the, the most reps he can. And, and then you throw him out there and you let him, you let him have some success or fail and keep throwing him out there. And he'll, he'll adjust. He's a really good athlete and, and has been good for a long time. you got to trust in that. Yeah, well, when it was, yeah, I know that our conversation in Scottsdale was quick, but one of the things you said about him was that he wants to be great and he wants to learn. And I, I've taken that with me. So how, how do you see that? Like as a manager, what are the things that you're looking for to know that a player like that is engaged in actively getting better? Well, that's it right there. It's the engagement process. It's him asking the questions. It's him having the conversations. It's him having the, um, you know, the the personality to go in the cage and talk about the hitting with the hitting guys. It's to to have the engagement with Jason Hayward and Ian Happ and the other outfielders to talk about how how Wrigley plays, how uh, they can best communicate, what where where are the strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, trying to get better in every way uh, with um, Willie Harris and, and working in the outfield and Mike Napoli on the bases. Uh, he's just engaged. And then with the R and D guys, if he wants the information, it's there. But uh, right now, he's just been kind of doing his thing, being being athletic and, and trusting his baseball skills. And um, he's done a really nice job so far. He's engaging, though, man. Like, when he when he steps in, in the locker room, he, he's got a great smile, great way about him. Um, you know, his personality just kind of even not speaking the language, him and his interpretive toy just have a really good way about themselves. Ian Happ's been pretty good. Are we seeing the growth of, like, a leader inside your clubhouse with Happ, along with how well he's playing? Yeah, yeah, Happer. You know, I think Happer went through some some growth period last year, uh, the failure early on, and then the success later, and the belief in himself. Yeah, I, you know what's what's really been impressive for me is, is uh, Ian's work that he's done from the right side of the plate versus left-handed hitters driving the ball last night to right center. He got caught for an out, but he's got three hits to the right side early on in the season, and the big hit last night uh, through the six hole. I mean. Um, just the, the calmness about him holding down the middle of the order right now. Um, you know, I, I think we've got a lot of confidence in Ian. He's got a lot of confidence in himself. And I think the numbers are pretty clear. When he has success, we win ball games. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a credit to him. He's continued to grow. There is that everybody's going to go through moments of success and struggle. And being able to stay right mentally, have confidence in yourself is the key to that. And, and Ian's done a nice job and continue to grow. I love watching Justin Steele pitch, and he's missing bats. And I know that you're you're trying to build that arm up so he can go deeper into games. What are the things that he needs to do to stay effective and successful? Uh, I mean, for me, he's doing a really nice job. He's just continuing to grow and trust in himself. Um, the forcing fastball is real. It played in Colorado, like you said. Just He's a fun guy to watch pitch. He attacks hitters. Uh, trusting in his stuff. Don't get away from what you do well. Um, he has a two-seamer and a change-up that are good pitches, but his bread and butter are going to be that four-seam fastball and the slider and making sure you trust that in the right moments and um, still being able to go deep in the games, be efficient, you know, the little things, handle the adversity moments, all those growth periods that we'll see throughout this season that will come and go, um, and just staying, staying true to himself, trusting himself, just kind of how we talked about Ian just a second ago. You got to – everybody's going to have those moments of adversity. You're going to have some, some moments that you struggle. It's believing in yourself, keeping your confidence, and, and, and trusting in what you do well and sticking with that. When, when you have two guys like Schwindel and Wisdom that, that kind of came on the scene and had some success last season and now are maybe, you know, they're, they're stalwarts in your lineup, how do you convince them that, hey, you guys have proven that you belong here? I mean, I tell them, I think, you know, it's funny, like going back to spring training, when I told them they were on the team, I told them pretty early because I saw this frustration and trying to press and get ready and 
um, watching them go about their work. They're great guys, but then in the games, you could tell, like, you know, every out felt like the end of the world. And, and you know, to tell me, I, you know, I think I t- took for granted, like, neither one of them, uh, I, I, Frank had, but Wiz had never made opening day lineup. I think Frank wanted that just confirmation from the manager and that security, right? Like, it always makes you feel better. So just talking through them, continue to show belief in them, putting them in the lineup, uh, understand there's going to be success and struggles. Again, them staying true to who they are. We know who Wiz is. You know, he's got big-time power, and some of that didn't show up early in the season because of the weather, and he, he hit a ball that should have went out here at home, and uh, a couple balls that got caught uh, that were hit hard, and you got to keep trusting in that. And when you have the manager just saying, hey, stick with it, like knowing that they're going to be in there on a regular basis and find the right matchups for them, I think – just uh, reassures them to, to be who they are. And they're really good hitters. They're really good players. Uh, Frank's gotten so much better on defense in his short time here, continues to develop. Wiz is so solid at third. Uh, continue to work on stuff with our hitting group. Those guys are, are going to be, you know, big-time bats for us to, to have some success throughout the season. What was going on with Frank's home run celebration yesterday? <laughs> I think he just uh, – he had, he had told – uh, our hitting coach, um, Greg Brown, sit, standing next to me, I heard him. He said, I'm not hitting another ball on the ground. He's hit a, a bunch hard here lately. I'm getting this ball in the air. And I'm, I'm thinking, wow, it's windy and cold and, and Wrigley. That's probably not a, a good formula. But um, he hit it high and to right. And uh, I think he was just fired up to get another uh, home run like he did in Colorado, but kind of get, get balls up in the air. He's got enough power to get the ball hit the ball out to all fields, and he got it up and that, hit that jet stream and hit it pretty good, and it, it went out. I think he was just fired up to finally have some stuff fall. He's, he's hit some balls hard right at guys and, and on the ground, and uh, that's not a good formula in our game right now.